Welcome to Knowledgeable Aging. I'm your host, Jason Kotar. Joining us today to talk about how to maximize your home care service is Jennifer Lagerman. Jennifer is a former family caregiver, home care aide, and home care administrator. She also founded Next Gen Copy, a marketing and operations consulting firm for home care agencies from startup to sell, and also is an active writer, researcher, and journalist in the space. How are you doing today, Jennifer? I am doing well. Thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm looking forward to our conversation, but before we get started, for those that are joining us for the live webinar, in the, you'll see a control panel on your right-hand side. Uh, we will have a little time for Q&A once the presentation is done, so please type your questions into the uh, control panel, and we will do everything in our power to get your questions answered. All right, Jennifer, how to maximize your home care service? All right, let's get started. Yes. All right what to look for in a home care agency. So when you're searching for home care, it's often a really tumultuous time where you are worrying about a lot of different things, stressing out a, bit, a bunch of different things, and it's hard for you to know where to start. And here are some basic tips on what you should look for. Basically, find one that puts you first and makes you feel calm and at ease, because the last thing you need is a home care agency that's going to stress you out, make you worry, make you feel concerned, and you know it's just a disaster in the making. And also, you get what you pay for, but also be cautious of deals and specials. So some agencies may offer an introductory rate or have a special or a credit for your initial care period, um, but also get a sense of the range of how much home care agencies are charging your area and get a sense of, okay, this is the low end, this is the higher end, and maybe somewhere in the middle um, and see what they offer. You know, standalone home care is a basic expectation at this point, but most home care agencies understand that they need to be offering more, whether that's on-call support, geriatric care management, offering skilled nursing services, and other service lines that can work in tandem with home care, such as home health or hospice. And just to get a sense of what else they offer, do they do medical staffing as well? For communities, it's, if, say, your loved one moved into a community nearby, would they be able to move with you to the community or do they only offer care services at home um, and then pay special attention to the initial interaction you have or that first phone call how does that person make you feel were they informed did you have to get transferred to somebody else in order to get your information taken down and for them to give you more information about their services do they offer to send you information via email or direct mail and just get a feel for that conversation are they going to charge you a rate for the assessment? Do you have to pay extra for um, supplies and stuff like that? So these are some basic tips on what you should look for when you're doing the search for home care. What questions you should be asking? It's hard to know what to look for when you've never done this before. So having been in the industry, here are a couple questions you should be asking when you're in that process. Firstly, how are your caregivers hired and how are they selected? How selective are they? Um, I've talked to some home care agency owners who have a 1% hiring rate. So out of 100 applicants, they may hire one. Understand how they make that decision and how they come to the conclusion of hiring a specific caregiver. And ask if you can meet the caregivers. You may get a mixed response when asking this question. Some may not offer for you to meet the caregiver before your first visit. Others may bring perhaps bios or a write-up of each caregiver that they think about having um, on your service. Um, so you may get some mixed responses there, but see how they take that question. Some may not offer this at all and understand the rationale behind that is also kind of important. And then ask them how their caregivers are trained, but also in particular to your loved one's condition. You know, that's great that they may, may um, train their caregivers in dementia care, but what if your loved one doesn't have dementia and they have something else such as Parkinson's or COPD or CHF, for example. And also take time to ask, what their process is for signing on someone onto service. Um, it's not that quick of a process. Well, it's not as quick as you may want it to be. Um, there's usually a service agreement. There's a, a bunch of contracts that need to be signed. They also need to take time to meet with their scheduler and care coordinator to make sure that they have caregivers that are available for the services that you need, for the times that you need them, and with the training that would, they would need in order to work with your loved one. And then how do they handle scheduling conflicts or a caregiver not being available if they call out, for example. Are they asking you to be available for backup care or are they going to you know, leave you without care? And what does that look like for them? Do they have on-call support? 
or someone from the office may come and fill in that shift for you. So get a sense of how they run their business. And how to shop around for home care. One big thing I would suggest is if there are multiple parties involved to assign one person to call around to agencies and go through the process from start to finish. If there is a POA involved, please have them be the one to call because if they aren't the decision maker, it'll be hard to coordinate care when you have to go through several people in order to get to the decision maker. Um, also get a sense of their billing rates. How do they charge differently for holidays, weekends, overnights, and what that rate includes? As I said before, some people do charge for an assessment. Some people charge different rates for different shift times, like a two hour shift versus a six hour shift. And then you may have to supply gloves and other supplies to the caregiver and understand what um, payer sources that they work with. Um, some may only work with private pay, meaning you pay out of pocket for services. Some may also work with different long-term care insurance um, carriers. So get a sense of what your budget is, what funding sources you have available, and if an agency works with those payer sources and how they coordinate that. Like, do they submit the claims? Do you have to submit the claims? And with um, care notes, do the caregivers have experience in taking detailed care notes to demonstrate need? And then once you've found your home care agency that you want to work with, you have to know what to do next. Um, I would say work with the team to create a care plan. Your home care agency will probably create a care plan based on the assessment when they first came out. Usually it's a nurse or a care manager. Um, and when I was needing, uh, when I was providing care with my mom for my grandmother, we both put together a care plan for caregivers to look at in addition to the plan that they had from their provider. It really helped us to establish expectations like, oh, my grandmother really likes listening to this type of music or she really likes this type of food, if you can make that, or she likes going outside, she likes gardening, to really help them get a sense of her personality and who she is. And then to also set expectations for what you want to see in your loved one's care experience. Um, don't be too anxious to quit services when your loved one is over the condition that they've had, if it's temporary, make sure that your loved one is living life to their fullest and understand what the process looks like moving forward. If your loved one is living with a terminal condition, improvement may not be realistic, but you want them to have a high quality of life that they enjoy and being able to engage in their interests. Um, I would also make sure to set clear boundaries. Just because you're home does not mean that you're necessarily available to cover a shift. Some may triage clients based on if they have someone at home able to care for their loved one, like, oh, if I don't get this shift filled, someone else is home to take care of them anyway. So make sure you set those clear expectations in saying, I expect you to send someone and we can be flexible in terms of who um, gets sent out. And then I can kind of show you a peek behind the curtain um, I've worked as a caregiver in a home care agency. I've also done scheduling, intakes, and um, now I work as a consultant. So here is what you need to know. Uh, most agencies I've worked with have on-call support available and are able to field emergencies as needed after hours. So um, after hour support should really be, you know, you have an emergency come up. If you have like billing or hiring questions, those are best served during office hours, like Monday to Friday, nine to five or something like that. Because if you call after hours, you will likely come into contact with someone who doesn't know those types of things. Um, understand that your billing rate covers a lot more than the caregiver. I hear a lot from families that, you know, my caregiver is only making X amount of dollars when I'm charged Y. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes into the background of working in home care, and that covers the caregiver wages, training, um, licensing, bonding, insurance, liability, um, also pay raises. And in some cases, they will process payment claims, like filling out your long-term care insurance claim and getting that filed for you. And also to understand that kindness goes a really long way. Um, I have been on the receiving end of a lot of home care calls, and oftentimes they are not the best. They're not positive in nature. And it was extremely discouraging many times, many days. And being able to extend kindness is probably the best thing that you can do to be understanding I've spent 12 hours filling a shift before, and it was so discouraging to 
be on the calling end to tell a relative about the situation um, despite all of my efforts in trying to fill a shift. And it really amounted to almost nothing. And I felt so empty at the end of the day. I felt really defeated and um, being met with uh, unkind words was really um, a tough thing to deal with that day. So that's a little bit of a peek behind the curtain when it comes to uh, what goes on in a home care agency behind the scenes. Thank you, Jennifer. We have uh, quite a few questions. Um, uh, as a consultant in this home care agency uh, industry, I want to focus on the fees. How does somebody understand if, if they are just starting the process, what is commonplace? You have mentioned that upfront fees, ongoing fees. Is is there somewhere somebody should educate themselves? Um, there aren't a lot of resources out there when it comes to um, home care rates. What I would suggest is going to the Genworth um, cost of care calculator. They can kind of give you a sense of the rates by state. The average I think is about $28 an hour nowadays, um, but it really does vary depending on the state. Yeah. Um, billing, I want to stay along, along the line of uh, finances. Mm -hmm. How does somebody begin that process? Let's just say they've got a loved one that has some type of cognitive uh, decline. Will this home care agency, will they help them understand the financial aspects as far as uh, what is covered and what is not? Or is that up to the, the loved one to understand what, you know, what's covered, whether it's their insurance or Medicare, et cetera? Um, when you get your service contract and paperwork, they should outline what's included in your rate. And if they don't, don't be afraid to ask. Get in touch with their billing person and say, hey, you know, I'm being charged you know, $28 an hour, but what does this include? What isn't included? And get a sense of what they do and don't cover. Some agencies might not be licensed. There are non-licensed states out there. So be, be diligent in searching for a home care agency that has a good reputation in the area look at Google reviews. Um, if billing is a problem, that will probably be apparent in their reviews and feedback from clients. So be a little um, scrutinizing when searching for a home care agency, but make sure that their billing department um, knows you and really understand what your rate includes and doesn't include. Okay. How specialized are home care agencies now when it comes to uh, individuals that have health uh, health issues, whether it's dementia or you know Parkinson's or uh, other types of ailments, um, are they specialized or is it the caregivers that they have on staff? How does that how does that work? Sure, um, I would say it's kind of mixed um, when it comes to that answer. Certain home care agencies do specialize as a whole as a company. Um, others will train their caregivers in special types of care. Um, some different training companies like Care Academy um, do um, provide certifications when a caregiver completes a certain amount of courses. You can become certified in cooking, you can become certified in mental health, you can become certified in dementia and Alzheimer's care, Parkinson's care. Um, so different agencies, depending on their training programs, may specialize. Um, I've worked with home care agencies that specialize in dementia and Alzheimer's care. Others specialize in cancer care. So I would really get to know the agency that you're working with or ones that you're considering and ask them what their specialty programs look like and how that works and how they're training their caregivers in those programs. Is a, is a common mistake that individuals make with their loved one to just focus on the short-term care and not the long-term care if they may need to have uh, some type of home care agency for a longer duration? Um, I've definitely seen that. Um, I've seen a variety of different situations. Sometimes people um, start care too early and their loved one really is too independent and doesn't want someone around. Um, others only want care for, you know, a vacation. So that's that's all they may need. Um, I think it's important to think of the long game when it comes to home care because it is really great when it comes to preventing falls, preventing readmissions, and getting other needed services in there. Like if your loved one needs PT and OT, it may take having a home care agency in there, getting a caregiver's eyes and ears on the ground to go back to their home care agency and say, hey, I really think that this person should have some type of therapy coming in to help them with their mobility, to help them get to where they wanna be. Like if they wanna play golf again, but their back really hurts, maybe they could 
help bridge those gaps and help them um, take steps toward becoming uh, reaching their goal. Yeah. You mentioned the process. What is the typical process when somebody starts conversations or settles on a home care agency? Sure, um, I can kind of explain that a little more. So you call up a home care agency because you need services. They will generally take down your information, send you to someone else who is a, a formal intake coordinator, and they'll take down the information that you need, get a feel for your situation, schedule an assessment to come out for an in-person consultation and they'll get a feel for your loved one and the house that they're living in and what they might need, come up with a schedule like, okay, we may need five days of care a week, six hours a day. Um, how are we going to be paying for this today? Or, you know, whenever you decide to start um, and then coordinate a start date, come back with their scheduler, pick out caregivers that meet this client's needs, come up with a care plan, introduce the caregiver at the house on the first day, and then follow up after the first day of services to see how things went. And then usually they do, I'd say every three months, they do a quality assurance visit to make sure that there are any updates or, hey, this client's condition has changed in the last three months. And then they do a, a reevaluation visit to make sure that things are current in their care plan, maybe collect some care notes, and then care just continues indefinitely until the client chooses to discharge service or they pass away or move into a community. How involved, how involved should the family be? What do you tell, um, what do you tell families when it comes to their loved one when they go into a home care agency as far as what the expectation should be from their end versus the expectation you kind of talked a little bit, maybe we could go a little bit more detail as far as what will the home care agency allow? Yeah, your experience is unique to you and your family. Um, I don't want to say that you should be heavily involved, but if you want to be heavily involved, be heavily involved. Um, if you don't want to be involved, you want to be more hands off, maybe you can ask for a weekly update email as to how things are going. Set up an expectation of a communication cadence and how you want to be communicated with. Sometimes people want a daily check-in call or people may want a monthly check-in and kind of summarize what's happened in the last 30 days. Or some people may, um, visit their loved one every so often and get an update from the caregiver or their loved one directly. So really it's up to you in terms of how involved you want to be, but be upfront in setting your expectations. Like, hey, I am a long distance family member and I can't be there all the time. So I need you, I need to rely on you guys to be my eyes and ears in my loved one's home. So I would really appreciate a weekly update via email or call regarding how my loved one is doing. Yeah. Somebody asked, is is there a, a difference between the larger home care agencies and the smaller one? Is, is there anything people should be thinking about when it comes to those ones that are in multiple states versus a, a smaller boutique agency that's you know in their area? Sure. Um, I think there's pros and cons to both. When it comes to a franchise, um, they are most most of the time locally owned anyway and independently owned. So even within franchises, each one is ran and operated differently. Sometimes people may own multiple territories, um, but they're owned independently of the franchise. Sometimes there are corporate owned locations that are owned by the you know corporate headquarters and ran through their corporate headquarters, but generally they have an office manager that runs their day-to-day -day operations. Um, so that's what I would say about um, the franchise agencies. They have a centralized system of operating and it may be more difficult to make changes when it comes to a larger home care agency as opposed to when you work with a boutique like mom and pop home care agency i'd like to right. call them um, they are kind of created from the ground up in terms of their business and operations so their ability to kind of change quickly is a lot easier and they're a lot more nimble when it comes to changing things and more flexible how they can market how they can provide care um changing their um EHR or software system um, in terms of their hiring policies. And so there's a lot more freedom when it comes to changes and how the agencies are run at a boutique level. So there's pros and cons to both. Um, and I, would, I wouldn't recommend going either way. I would find what works best for you and your family. Yeah. Somebody asked, how do we convince our elders to accept care when they've always been independent? Do, and maybe they think their informal care can manage, or maybe they may are concerned about the cost. So how do we convince our elders to accept care? Sure. 
Um, when it comes to independence and wanting to maintain independence, if you're talking to your loved one in the context of themselves needing care, you're going to go in circles. It's not going to make sense to them. What you should do um, in this type of situation is really frame the care as a respite for you as a caregiver. Like, look, I need help. So I'm gonna have someone come in and help you so that I can take a break so that I can go take care of my own things and kind of take care of my life, like my obligations, my work, my kids, my family, blah, blah, blah. I would also um, frame the care maybe as having a friend come over and hang out with you. You don't need to frame it as you're gonna have help come over and take care of you. You can frame it in a way that's more appetizing to someone who's skeptical about needing care themselves. Um, you could also um, frame it as it's being free it's or the cost is covered. Sometimes there's a cost objection from the care recipient and they're like, I don't want to burden the family by having these excessive care costs. So just by saying it's free sometimes helps to alleviate those fears. And also sometimes you could just frame it as it's just going to be for a short time, even if it is indefinite or you plan on having it long term. It's just going to be for a few days. You know, I'm going to be away, quote unquote. And we're going to have someone come in and kind of take care of the house sometimes helps. Um, so really just framing it as something that's not for them specifically may help. And generally, I've seen that when someone is skeptical about care, once they start, they generally see the benefits like, oh, I can have someone that can help me bake cookies. I can have someone that can take me to the mall. I can have someone take me to my doctor's appointment if my daughter isn't available. So by having other people come in, they may realize, oh, I really like talking to someone that's, you know, really younger than me. Sometimes um, older adults really enjoy having a 19 or 20 year old come visit with them because they have a vigor and energy that they may not have been exposed to with their with their children. Yeah, you had mentioned uh, Jennifer earlier about you. Know, I think you had mentioned that you had seen some people that were in home care when maybe they didn't need to be. They were too soon. Mm -hmm. If somebody's watching this, how do they know? I, I know everybody's different, right? Just like their health, everybody's different. But how can how can somebody make sure that they're not putting their loved one or making sure their loved one goes into home care when they're not ready? Sure. Um, I would just kind of take stock of your loved one. If they are starting to decline, if they're starting to become more depressed, if they've fallen recently, if they had a stroke um, and they're not their normal selves, having someone come in may be helpful. And I would recommend getting home care earlier on than waiting too long. Nobody usually is like, I wish I would have started home care later. That's generally not the case. Um, so I would recommend even starting with companionship. This companionship, there's no personal care being done, like no hands-on care is how I describe it. Really companionship is having someone come over to socialize, play games, um, bring you to an appointment or take you out you know, to lunch, dinner, whatever the case is, and really just to hang out with you, to give you some sense of um, engagement and being able to have someone to talk to if you're bored. A lot of people you know, live alone later in life and it causes a lot of negative feelings and may you know, even play into longevity and shortening your life. So I would highly recommend taking stock of your loved one Check in on them, especially on the holidays. That's generally generally when people realize that home care is a need. Usually, um, every time there's a holiday, there's a spike in calls for you know, service. So I'd highly recommend taking stock. Like, okay, how is my loved one doing? How have they been since the last time I came over? Um, how have things changed? Are they declining? What can we put into place? And also, check out if their house is friendly for them to age in. Mm -hmm. Are there like stairs a lot? Um, are there things on the floor that could be in their way? Um, are there lights in the bathroom? Are there grab bars in the bathroom? Working with a home care agency, they will do a safety assessment most of the time. Make sure that they, they do one of those. And having that sense of, you know, sense of peace of mind, knowing that the, the home is safe is definitely a big part of it. And they can make recommendations for durable medical equipment and other adaptations to make the home more age friendly. So even if you don't need home care services, they may be able to put you in touch with um, someone who can help renovate the house or modify the house so it's safer for your loved one to age in place in. Early on in our conversation today, we were talking about, well, you know, how does somebody begin this process, right? And it was just like, well, there's no real one place to go, right? So what, what value could a senior placement um, say a service type company offer an individual and their family? Sure. 
generally when it comes to senior placement, they're talking about senior living um, or residential care options. So they will generally give you, like they'll meet with you, get, get an idea of what you're looking for in terms of cost, budget, um, care needs, and what you're looking for, your priorities are. Like if you prioritize, you know, eating a vegan diet, um, you, they can take that into consideration. But with senior placement, it's generally for senior living. Um, so they can definitely put you in touch with good communities that are in the area, accompany you on tours and show you around and kind of be an advocate in your corner to ask questions or um, help you get a sense of the community and if you like it or not. Um, some do work with home care agencies. Um, okay. Most of the time it's with senior living. So when they place someone, the community will generally pay them a fee. Okay. Um, they don't get paid simply to help you. They only get paid when you select a community that they chose or that they accompanied you with. So there's an incentive for them to be helpful to you and to be an advocate and they wouldn't get any compensation until you made a decision based on their judgment. So there's definitely a good place to start, um, but when it comes to home care, there aren't as robust services such as senior placement. Yeah. How has COVID impacted the home care industry in your mind um, for the better or the worse? And where do you think we're headed? Sure, COVID definitely threw a wrench in terms of home care agencies. Um, the caregiver turnover rates are already um, startling. So COVID really made a lot of caregivers pick um, leaving the industry because they often are caregivers themselves looking after a loved one who may have multiple chronic conditions or are caring for a child who may have chronic conditions and or has respiratory issues. So we definitely saw a lot of um, caregivers leaving. And not only that, we saw clients leaving because they don't want people in their homes. So a lot of us saw um, clients leaving and caregivers leaving. So it really left administrative staff in a tough spot. I was working in a home care agency during the beginning of the COVID pandemic and my hours got cut in half. So it put me in a tough situation as well. So it was a really all encompassing um, sad time around for home care. And things are looking better now. Um, during the pandemic, most home care agencies offered hazard pay. Um, they also um, provided regular COVID testing and provided COVID vaccinations and kept caregivers in the loop and clients in the loop with constant um, virus related communications. Um, one of the companies I worked with had a COVID task force really going in on a weekly basis to see what updates there are in our county and reporting those updates to clients and caregivers to really keep them in the loop. Um, also doing daily symptom checks. When a caregiver clocks into a ship, they have to checkbox all their symptoms if they have any and if they have any symptoms the office would get a notification and then they'd have to follow up saying is was this a mistake do you have symptoms and then kind of go through that protocol with them so it yeah. did impact the industry a lot a lot of home care agencies lost revenue throughout this entire time and for the future i would imagine that um, home care agencies are going to be uh, better prepared for pandemics and viruses moving forward i think this was really oh my God, we didn't have an emergency plan in place. What do we do? Panicking. Now, having been through the pandemic for several years, I think that they're a lot more nimble and able to handle these conflicts with a lot more grace. If you want to get in touch with me, uh, feel free to get on my website. It's nextgen with two ends, copy.com, or you can get in touch with me at my phone. It's 978 eight seven five one seven two four or by email at Jennifer Logeman L A G E M A N N sixteen at gmail dot com. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to send them over. Yeah. Excellent. So I know you gave out your contact information. So thank you so much for your time today, Jennifer. As far as knowledgeable aging, you can go to our website, knowledgeableaging.com. You can see all of our upcoming and archived uh, webinars. You can also go to YouTube, type in Knowledgeable Aging. We encourage you to subscribe. We update that a couple times per month. If podcasts are your thing, you can find us on Apple Tunes, Spotify, etc. Till next time, I'm your host, Jason Kotar. And this is Knowledgeable Aging.